Uh, J.P. Morgan says these uh, loans are so pervasive they total 69% of Chinese GDP or six trillion dollars. So economists say China banks are preparing to ink at least another four billion of loan facilities for borrowers this quarter. Uh, this surge in lending really a, a complication for the government and some investors are saying it's a great short opportunity. At least uh, Jim Chanos is. Listen. Okay. Well, our view is is that the Lehman Brothers post five years the real credit excesses are happening in China. The U.S. went through its excesses, went through the ringing out process in 08, 09. It recapitalized the banking system. I think regulation, however we might argue it politically, is better than it was. Um, and I think we're, at, uh, we're coming out of the credit cycle. The Chinese government, Mia, maintains that uh, these debt risks are manageable, but uh, it's certainly a concern. And uh, non-performing loans, if you see a spike in this, that's a real risk for the economic recovery in China. Let's not forget that they want to hit that 7.5% GDP It's rate. a big issue, though, and it's not just an issue that China faces. Many don't realize that the U.S. also has a pretty pervasive and prevalent shadow banking system because at the end of the day, companies, investors, they need liquidity. And so it looks like China has found more what I would call creative ways to get this funding. So we're even talking about offshore funding options as well. Yeah, very creative ways. That's because uh, let's look back to June when the government basically sent a signal to the credit markets via money market rates that uh, things were going to change. That's when we saw the market basically seize up those rates hitting a, a record. We covered it very closely here on Bloomberg. As a result of that, the bond market didn't quite see the kind of strength that it would normally see. And now syndicated loans to Chinese companies, they're soaring. In fact, the best quarter in two years, again, after the cash crunch curbed expansion in the bond market. And in terms of going overseas, listen to this fact. Chinese companies turning to the offshore loan market increasingly over the summer, of course, to refinance debt or support acquisitions. And this statistic struck me. China is now the second most acquisitive country after the U.S. this year. $119 billion on M&A. And you Big need numbers. liquidity. Okay, Zeb, thank you so much for that. Zeb Eckert with a look at China's shadow banking problem. We'll stick with China and we'll talk transportation now because two of the big growth industries in the country include hydro and high-speed trains. Alstom, based in Paris, does both and has been operating in China for some 50 years now. We caught up with CEO Patrick Crone, who says the possibilities are vast. The Chinese market is by far the largest hydro market in the world. So it's logical to expand here.